let's talk about some new brush options. And I'm gonna keep this super simple just to kind of test out some functionality. So I'm gonna go in here to the plain 3D, drag down our canvas, go into edit mode, um, make it a poly mesh 3D. I went ahead and turned on polyframe so you can see we're just working with geometry here. Go over here to the geometry tab or geometry submenu and then just hit divide until you get up to about a quarter million uh, polygons here. So we'll go ahead and turn polyframe off and uh, we'll just start out with a standard brush. So standard brush, pretty simple. You go through and you just brush and you have ZA turned on and it does things. However, if you go over here to brush, alpha and texture, uh, there was some previous stuff in here that was kind of fun and useful, like the poly paint modes, for example, if you're painting with RGB mode, which is right here. If you're painting with poly paint turned on, you could paint, colorize, multiply, light and darken uh, with your paint. There was a magnify curve in here you could play with, but now you're going to see a whole bunch more stuff in here. Uh, basically, here's the alpha and textures, uh, dual alpha and textures that you can use. And when you load things up in here, you're going to have a transition between these two alpha. So let's dive into this and see if we can't figure out how these are working together. So the first thing you're gonna notice is when I hover over this one, that little pop-up helper says base alpha. And when I hover over this one, it says current alpha and it also highlights what's up here. So basically if you go up here and choose an alpha, just with your regular old brush, just like old school Z brush, you make it put an alpha in here, that'll automatically populate the current alpha. Now the second one over here is a uh, base alpha. So it's gonna be a secondary alpha that we can use. So we'll go ahead and pick something very different out of this alpha menu. Of course, you can pick one of the defaults in here. You can go into import an alpha or you can hit comma on your keyboard and go into the alpha uh, section. And if you have any downloaded alphas that you have that you use or you wanna grab some of these that are in there by default, feel free to load those up. But we'll go ahead and hit the comma key so we can turn that off. And again, we'll just load something that's very different, maybe the scratchy alpha 60. So we have a scratchy alpha and a star alpha. So when I go over here and I start using this, you're gonna see, I can start with a very light brush stroke and then a very heavy brush stroke. And let's tap S on our keyboard, make this a very large brush size. And then when you get in here, you can see, okay, when I'm doing a very light brush stroke with my tablet, I'm getting this scratchy alpha. There's a little hint of star alpha showing up, but then when I press really hard, it's, and you know what, let's go up here to stroke and turn off lazy mouse, or you just tap L on your keyboard to toggle that off. Uh, so when I press light, it's going to be, again, you get a little bit of that scratchy. And then when I press really heavy, it's going to transition to just showing that star alpha. So let's go ahead and undo that. And let's talk about how those alpha transitionings are happening and how we can control that. So alpha transition right here, you have a curve and I'm gonna maybe put in some helper <laughs> graphics right here, but essentially what we're looking at is this alpha right here, think about this dark part as controlling how much of this alpha is showing up depending on pressure sensitivity. So low pressure sensitivity is controlling uh, this section and then high pressure sensitivity is controlling this section. So if I actually flip horizontal, this little flip H, now when I do lower pressure sensitivity, the star is gonna show up. And then when I do high pressure sensitivity, the scratchy alpha is gonna show up. And in these curves, there's actually, you can save, you can load, you can undo and redo, and you can also just hit the reset button. So essentially what this graph is telling my, my brush is when my pressure sensitivity is very, very low, put in a lot of this scratchy alpha. See how much dark is up here? You're putting in a lot of scratchy alpha. And then here's the middle, the midline right here. Once you cross this threshold, it's gonna have very little scratchy and a whole lot of star. And of course you can control that with this graph shape. So how, you know, how do graphs work? Well, in ZBrush, if you just tap on the graph, you can add a point. If you pull this point out, you're gonna see it's a Bezier curve. There's a circle around this curve, so you can go through and grab that and you can tighten and uh, smooth out that curve. You can also grab a curve in here to move it around. And then you can actually, if you pull off without letting go of your tablet and then pull back on, it'll turn it into a sharp transition. And if you just grab a point and then pull it off, it'll delete that curve or that dot. So for example, if I click on this curve here and I just pull this down, what we've now told this alpha is this alpha here, which is controlling the dark area, remember, show a lot of it, even up to the 50% threshold on my pressure sensitivity, you're going to see a lot of this. And only once we pass this, you're going to start seeing a little bit of that star introduced. So now, you know, I can press a little bit harder and I'm still going to get scratchy alpha until I press really hard and then my star will show up. And the opposite is also true. If we take this dot and pull it the other way, now we're telling it this is the overpowering alpha here. Um, and then again, this is your 50% line. So here, when the pressure is very, very low, 
you'll see a little bit of grass, but almost immediately you're going to start seeing that star introduced. So with this graph, you can go through here. And again, if I just barely stroke, even just barely uh, stroking on my tablet, I'm still getting some alpha introduced. Again, it appears very, very quickly. In fact, uh, to really illustrate this, if we go in here and again, I'll undo my brush strokes over here and then you can even un you can go through your undos on here or just hit the reset button. So if you take a dot and we put it right up in that 50% section right here and then take another dot and pull it straight down. Now what we're telling this graph to control is basically up until I hit that 50% point, only be scratchy. And then once I cross this 50% threshold with my pressure sensitivity, only be star alpha. So now I can go through here and you see it's scratchy, scratchy, scratchy. And then if I, as soon as I get to a certain point, it's only star. So that transition happens very abruptly and uh, very quickly. So again, up until 50%, you can kind of even start feeling out where that 50% mark is. So if you want to go through here and be like, okay, grass, 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 and then star, very heavy. Uh, again, you're just controlling that threshold right here. And of course, obviously feel free to put some other things in here. Again, we'll do, and I'm trying to do obvious things that are, you know, you can see. So here's an arrow and here's a circle. So now very light brush strokes, we're getting this arrow. And then of course, very heavy brush strokes, it immediately transfers over to the ring brush stroke. And before we get an RGB or texture uh, down here, I do want to point out that right above alpha and texture is also tablet pressure. So if you hold down shift and you can open up multiple submenus over here, you're going to see their size and Z intensity. So you can play with these. And remember, you know, if you make any changes on here, you can always go back to reset and it will reset back to the, the original. So if you ever mess anything up, you can always go here, hit the reset button, you're back where you started. But essentially what this is going to control is if I take this left slider all the way up, and I go down here to Z intensity and pull this all the way up, this is essentially gonna cause your pen tablet to behave a little bit more like a mouse. We basically maximize all that Z intensity. Now, and I can still get it to switch between these, but you're gonna see if I do a very light stroke, I still get a very heavy intensity. And then if I push really hard, uh, then I can transfer to the ring. Like I said, you're kind of maximizing your Z intensity, your pressure sensitivity, and your uh, size, the size of your brush. So I, I'm not getting a very small stroke, but if I hit reset and then I do a light size, now I'm getting a very small to very large, and then I'm getting that transition. And then if I go down here to Z intensity, I can reset this, and now I'm getting a size small to large, and my brush gets more intense as I press down harder. And the reason I bring those up is if I close this down, you're going to see we have an RGB intensity slider in here too. So let's talk a little bit about textures. I'm going to go ahead and hit undo just to go back to our clean canvas here. And in fact, let's go over here and I'm going to change my material to like skin shader four so we can see our color come up a little bit easier. And just so we can get some more fidelity, let's hit control D one more time. We'll get up to about a quarter million points. So exactly like the alphas, this one over here is going to be whatever texture you load by default. You know, if you're just going in here and you want, you know, you can put in our rainbow texture in here, it's going to show up here. So this is your current texture. And then over here is your base texture, your secondary texture. So we can go ahead and click on here. And I'm going to do something the opposite of this, which is going to be, let's do like a muddy brown. So here we're going to start out with a muddy brown with a very light stroke. And our alpha is also going to be an arrow. So we're going to have a very light arrow. And then when I press harder, we're gonna get the ring alpha. However, our texture isn't showing up. So let's make sure for our brush, we have RGB turned on. And then also in our subtool here, let's go ahead and turn on this little colorize button right here, that little paintbrush. So now again, we're gonna do a very light stroke. We're getting our arrow. However, I'm seeing a little bit of rainbow in there. And in fact, when I press harder, now it's gonna to transition to the ring alpha. And now we're getting a very rainbow color. So where's all that, where's that muddy brown going? Well, in order to see that when I'm doing a light stroke pressure, we have to go up here to our RGB intensity. And you're going to see is that the tablet pressure is actually telling the RGB intensity don't really show anything until you hit the 50% pressure mark for RGB intensity. It's different and it's getting weird, but it's different than this one, which is this is basically telling us, hey, you know, when we're at a lower pressure up till 50% pressure, show this and then show this. This is literally saying don't show any RGB until you get to this point. So let's talk about this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna take this texture transition and just like we did with our alpha here, we're gonna go down here to texture, we're gonna drag a dot straight up and then drag another dot straight down. So we're basically telling the muddy texture show up until I hit 50% and then rainbow show up. And again, if I go through here, nothing's really gonna show up until I cross that 50% threshold and then rainbow shows up. It gets a, you see a tiny bit of mud in here and that's really where this RGB intensity comes in. You'll see a tiny bit of mud show up 
at that 50% point. And then once you hit this threshold, we've, you know, basically this line right here is all where it is the only place where that mud's gonna show up. So to fix this, you can take the, so the focal shift by default is set at 75. If you put this down at zero, it'll even that line out. And if you, in fact, if you take this focal shift and say negative 100, this is gonna maximize our RGB intensity across all pressure sensitivity. So I'm basically saying, hey, no matter what my pressure sensitivity is, give me full access to our RGB values. So now when I do a very light stroke, you're gonna get pure mud. And then when I cross that 50% threshold, you're gonna get pure rainbow. And then I kind of let off a little bit at the end. So we got a little bit of muddy arrow in there. So hopefully, hopefully I explained this well enough uh, that basically you're controlling with alpha transition how much of this alpha shows up and how much of this alpha shows up. And again, if you ever want to flip these, just flip horizontal and then you'll get the opposite for that graph. I'm going to do that. And then and then using this graph to show how much of this color shows up and how much of this color shows up. The only weird thing with RGB is having to go up here to the RGB intensity and say, hey, let me have full access to my RGB regardless of pressure sensitivity because I want to control what textures be are seen in here. Now, of course, if you want to, you can go ahead and reset this and you can set this focus shift back to zero. So now you're allowing a little bit of that muddy to show up here at least. And then as you cross that threshold, it'll go into rainbow and then back to muddy once you drop below that threshold. So you don't have to max it out. You can still dial in, you know, you can f noodle uh, on this, on this, the graph a little bit. But essentially, that's how you're going to be juggling your RGB intensity, I'll go ahead and reset that, your alphas, and your textures. All right, let's talk about uh, color. So in fact, I'm gonna take uh, my standard brush, I just basically restarted ZBrush, so my standard brush. For the alpha base, I'm gonna go in here and do the scraggly alpha, and then we're gonna go in here and we're gonna do maybe alpha 06 for a round alpha. You can make alpha changes in here, so if, while we're talking about this, go in here to alpha, modify. For example, I can crank up the streak length, and then the density, and then the intensity, so I can get like a streaky version of my alpha for this uh, current alpha right here. So I can transition between these alphas. And like we were doing before, you know, you can use this alpha transition to go between streaky and raggedy. Now let's say I want to just use, you know, plain colors. Well, you can load in just plain colors. So if I go in here to texture import uh, on my desktop, I have a dark blue and a light blue. So I go ahead and open these up. And now I can click on these and I can say light blue and then dark blue. And then now, just like before, we can use our texture transition to transition between just light blue and just dark blue. However, we need to go over here and turn on colorize. We need to go up here and say paint with RGB. And now we can paint with Z add. We're Z adding sculpting information and we're painting at the same time. Just like before though, we're going from no poly paint to full poly paint. So let's go back up here to tablet pressure. We're gonna to go to RGB intensity, focal shift to negative 100. So now we're getting full RGB regardless of tablet pressure. So now we're gonna go from light and scratchy stroke to heavy and uh, dark blue. And of course, if you wanna change that transition, you can go in here and say, you know what? I want it to snap between light blue and dark blue based on texture, uh, based on pressure sensitivity. So once I hit a certain point, it'll immediately translate, it'll transfer from light to dark. Or if you wanna ease that out, you can say, we'll go put a little ease in and a little ease out on here. So now to go from light blue to dark blue, a little bit over time based on my pressure sensitivity. So here you can go light blue to dark blue. Of course, this still absolutely works with, you know, interpolate. So if I go, you know, light blue to dark blue and then light blue to dark blue and then control shift one to interpolate those strokes, I can still do all that. And one thing I should mention about the texture is you can go through here. So I've changed this to like texture 15. So I'm going to go light blue to this texture. I can modify this texture just like I modified this alpha by going in here to alpha modify. I can go in here to texture, adjust colors, and I can literally say, you know what, let's do a hue shift over here to the reds, or I can choose, you know, the red colors here. I can overwrite and then I can just change just those colors here. And if I'm okay with that, I can hit okay. And then you'll see the textural update. And now I can paint from light blue to that new texture also and underneath texture here. I can even use this gradient. So right now, if I turn this on or I select gradient, it'll go between black and white. But if I change this to like, let's go between red and yellow. And then I go in here and I hit gradient. It's gonna change all the darker values to red, all the lighter values to yellow and transition between them. So now I can paint light blue to this new updated texture. 
But let's say I want to use color swatches as primary and secondary color uh, in order to control my color. So one I can do is we'll go back in here to texture. We'll just go ahead and turn these off. We'll hit reset. Uh, we guess we can keep the same alphas. Those are fine. But now what I can do is I can go to the background color. We'll choose light blue. Foreground color, we'll choose dark blue. And if I start painting, you're going to see it's kind of just dark blue all over the place. Uh, if we go back up here to RGB intensity and we hit reset, you know, now it's going to go from low RGB intensity to to uh, full. So, you know, we'll keep this, but I'm what I'm expecting to see, and you know, so we can see this a little bit better. Let's go in here to the alpha and we'll say, take that streak length down to zero and we'll just use the same alpha for both. We'll say alpha 06 and alpha 06. So now, and in fact, you don't even have to sculpt. You can turn off Z add and you can just use RGB. Now, uh, if I turn on gradient, you're going to see I can kind of get both colors, but the light blue is kind of like a halo around the dark blue. If I go in here to switch color, now the background is dark blue. It's the opposite. I'm kind of getting a halo effect. You know, it's kind of a dark blue background with a light blue foreground. What I can do is I can go up here to preferences, tablet, and color gradients right here. So I can actually just crank this all the way up to one. So now, and we'll go back to switch color. So again, light blue to dark blue. If we reset our RGB value, it's gonna go from almost no RGB. So all of our light blue is kind of just out and then it transitions to dark blue. So again, focus shift negative 100, light blue to dark blue based on our pressure sensitivity. And if we wanna go into this brush alpha here and crank up our strength length again, we can go from a light blue with that light pressure sensitivity to dark blue. And let's go ahead and turn off, tap L to turn off your lazy mouse. So light blue to dark blue. And you'll get the, the streaky alpha going uh, once you hit this point in your alpha transition. So if we turn Z add back on, we go up here to maybe grab a sphere. Let's go ahead and turn on colorize, make poly mesh 3D. Oops, sorry, turn on colorize, hit control D a couple times to get some resolution going. And again, now we're using alphas and colors. We have gradient turned on and underneath our preferences you, uh, tablet, we have color gradient up to one. So now we're going from light blue to dark blue without having to use textures. And remember, you still have all the stroke options available to you. So if you wanna go in here, turn on your lazy mouse, you can see you might it might get a little bit stuttery. You can go in here to your stroke and you can turn that lazy step down a little bit. And you could even go in here to stroke modifiers and put your roll distance up to smooth out that alpha transition a little bit if you want. You can go down here to thick skin, turn that on, and it'll kind of cap the influence of this brush. So you can see if we put this up at like 13, it'll be okay, I'm good, and then eventually it'll just cap out at 13. If you turn this off, you'll see the difference. It won't cap out, it'll just keep building up. So everything is still available to you to use in ZBrush in conjunction with all of the changes you can now do with this dual action alpha and texture and color with gradient if you'd like.